Earth Day nail art with freehand nail art and stamping? Keep watching, I'll show you. For the freehand tree trunk, I use China Glaze Bills, Bills, Bills. I really love the gold shimmer in this polish and thought a tree trunk deserved a little glam. For the leaves, I did a dotacure using OPI's This Isn't Greenland, Super Chic Lacquer Germaphobe, and China Glaze Turned Up Turquoise. If you don't know what a dot of cure is, it's just a fancy term for a bunch of dots. To give the trees some color, I also used OPI's Rice Rice Baby and Susie Shops and Island Hops. For the tree trunk accent nails, I used OPI's Edinburgh and Taddies as the base coat. Um, if you know what Edinburgh and Taddies means, let me know in the comments below because I have no idea, but it sounds really dirty. To stamp with, I used Maniology's Anato Clay. Since I'm stamping, I used Maniology Sticky Base Coat and Maniology Smudge Free Top Coat. I've been asked if Maniology Sticky Base Coat can be used as an actual base coat, and I don't know yet, so. If you want to see a video where I try this out as a base coat, let me know in the comments below. Or let me know if you've used it as a base coat and it worked for you, or if it didn't. For my base and top coats, I use Glisten and Glow. And I decided this look was better off being matte, and so I used the matte top coat from Glisten and Glow as well. That was the first matte top coat that I could use, or that I did use, that was actually matte for me. So I'm really appreciative to this brand. Since I'm stamping, I'm gonna use a liquid latex. And I have a couple different brands, but this time I'm gonna use Hollow Taco. To get the tree trunk accent nails, I stamped using Maniology's BM XL203 plate. This was my very first plate from Maniology. And this was the second time I've ever used it. There are so many possibilities with this plate, sometimes I get overwhelmed. I've already suited up with a base coat, so let's get started. I applied two coats of OPI's Edinburgh and Taddies to my pinky and middle nail. So that can be the base color for my stamping nails. Whenever I stamp, I always apply a top coat in between the base color and the stamping. That way if I make a mistake, it's easy to fix. On to the freehand nail art. As you'll see, I am really nervous on camera. Or just in general. I don't know about you, but when I do freehand nail art, I get really shaky and nervous as if it can never be erased. It's kind of silly. So here I am dotting on the clouds and it takes me a long time to do this one little cloud. Really it could have been done in four easy dots, but I don't do a lot of clouds and I don't practice a lot with freehand nail art. So this took me a little while. So let's speed it up. I add a second cloud to this nail, and I do get it on my skin, but that's on purpose. Um, I clean it up afterwards, but I like when I'm doing images that it kind of looks like the picture goes off image or off my nail, and it like continues in another dimension or something. I don't know. I think it looks kind of cool. With my Twinkled Tea Unicorn Brush and China Glaze Bills, 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 I start to draw a tree trunk. It doesn't have to be perfect, so I just draw a couple lines and then color it in. I repeat this technique on my index finger. Now I can start the dot -a cure 
I start with OPI's Susie Shops and Island Hops. And I hop from ring nail to index finger. Next I go in with China Glaze Turned Up Turquoise. And this is one of my favorite colors. It is great for summertime manicures or a pedicure any time of the year. This is another great color, OPI This Isn't Greenland. I love greens and I don't know where that came from because green was always my least favorite color, but I love it for nail art. Time to switch it up with another pink, OPI's Rice Rice Baby. This is a neutral pink and I love neutrals. I don't know if they're my favorite or something more glamorous, but I think neutrals can create a really pretty manicure. Lastly, I go in with Super Chic Lacquer's Germaphobe to give this mani a little hollow. It's very subtle since the dots are so small, but I think it gives it the right look. And that's the trees. To protect the work I just did, I add Maniology's Smudge Free Top Coat to those two nails so I can work on my other two accent nails. This top coat has really been a game changer for me. You'll see me use it a lot. I've already applied my liquid latex, so now I'm ready to stamp. The image I'm using is quite large, so it takes me a couple swipes of polish. That way I can get full coverage. Using my clear jelly stamper, I carefully pick where the image will go on my nail. And voila! I'll repeat this technique on my middle finger. I cleaned the edges with some acetone so as to not pull off the picture, and here I'm struggling with my liquid latex. The formula isn't thick enough for me, so it's really hard for me to grab it, so I just grab it where I can. Not very satisfying. What's your favorite liquid latex? Or do you use something else? Let me know in the comments below. As you can see, I use the other liquid latex to stick to this liquid latex on my middle nail so I have something to pull up. Off camera, I added a layer of smudge free top coat to the remaining nails. And now I'm ready for my top coat from Glisten and Glow. I love how this turned out, but I felt like I could elevate it even more. So this is where I decided to turn it matte, using Glisten and Glow's matte top coat. Here's the finished look. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And for even more nail art, follow me on Instagram at AlwaysPolishedLife. I'll see you next time.